to our channel. I am so excited to share with you what we added to our micro micro homestead here in Hawaii and I cannot wait to show you the cutest pictures and videos ever of our new baby chicks. We have Peep, Poppy, Penny and they're three sisters and those are Rhode Island Reds and then we have three Easter Eggers and that is Molly, Marley, and Maple. So I'm going to take you along on the journey to show you the new chickens that we just got as well as showing you how to make Water Keeper. So Water Keeper is something I was really looking forward to creating and kind of figuring out because I love seltzer water but it's also not a necessity to buy. I love kombucha but it can be very expensive and it's a little bit more of a sour taste than I was hoping Water Keeper would be. So I feel like Water Keeper is the perfect combination of gut healthy kombucha like probiotics but then it also has a little bit of bubbly it's kind of like a pop and it has a little bit of sweetness because of the juice and it is to die for so I'm gonna take you along on the journey show you the chicks that we got as well as making water kefir at home for really inexpensive good for your gut good for your wallet and just very easy to make Seth built this genius small little chicken brooder for the little chicks and this is actually going to be the new garden bed once the chicks grow out into the larger coop. So I am just reintroducing them right into their new home. They are so adorable and they were a little nervous to come out but they are so happy now in their little tiny little area. They're using their wings and we added a chicken wire over the top so that they can't get out so that they can kind of stay safely right in this little chicken brooder. Oh my goodness, they are so cute. So we have three uh, Easter eggers, which will lay blue eggs. And then we have three Rhode Island red hens that will lay brown eggs. So they are so cute. They just sit right in the palm of your hand and just, just soak it in. They're so cute. to be in that corner but now they're obviously getting close to the key lamp and they are just so cozy. Love how they stick their necks out. When they stand up and they walk around they look like they have no necks and then now they look like they have like the longest necks ever. I'm going to show you how to make water kefir and the only ingredients you need is water. I use tap water from our fridge. You will need kefir starter grains as well as sugar. You can use brown sugar or organic cane sugar. I'm using organic cane sugar because it is cheaper and I got it in bulk from Sam's Club. For the starter grains, I got these for culturesforhealth.com. You can also order them on Amazon. I ordered from Amazon. They never came in because shipping here is crazy. So then I got them from Cultures from Health and then I got ended up getting both of them. So now I have two batches of kefir grains coming in. So you really only need one, but I'm really excited to show you the process of how to make kefir water. You are going to have to reactivate your grains. There are step-by-step -step instructions that come in the pamphlet when you get your kefir grains. So I won't walk through that, but after 72 hours, you will have activated kefir grains that you can use and make sure that you are buying water kefir grains because there's also milk kefir grains and they are two separate things. So I'm gonna insert clips from yesterday as I started the process for the water kefir and walk you through step by step of what you do to get kefir water. All right, so you're gonna start with a quarter cup of organic cane sugar and you're gonna add this right to the mason jar and use boiling hot water, about a half a cup to a cup, just to dissolve the sugar in the water so that it's thoroughly incorporated within the water. Now you wanna make sure you don't just use all boiling hot water and then dump in your kefir grains because it actually has a chance of killing the kefir grains because of the hot temperature. So to expedite this, I add ice to the mason jar to cool down the temperature of the water rapidly. And then I just top it off with a little bit of tap water and then I will add my kefir grains. 
So I will just take a little spatula with the keeper grains and dump them right into the mason jar. And then I just take the same spatula and I incorporate it because you don't want the keeper grains to sit on the top and you want them to be thoroughly incorporated within the water so that it can ferment the sugar water. And then once you mix this together, you can add a cheesecloth or a coffee filter with a rubber band and top it right on the top or you could use a really loose mason jar lid just so that it can ferment right on your counter and you're gonna leave this for 24 to 48 hours out in room temperature. And after 24 to 48 hours, you're gonna be left with a cloudy mixture and the keeper grains are gonna be on the bottom of the jar as you can see and you are gonna strain off the keeper grains with a fine strainer. You need one that has very small holes so that the keeper grains don't slide through. At this point, this is considered kefir. It's just very sour and wouldn't be the best. It also has zero carbonation. So strain off the kefir grains, and then what you'll do is you'll add this to a second fermentation that you'll leave on your counter again for about 24 hours, and that is what is gonna be causing the bubbly carbonation. As you can see, here are the kefir grains, really small, and that's why a fine mesh strainer is very important. So I'm gonna take about three fourths a cup. If you want more sweetness, you can add more juice. If you want less sweetness, you can add less juice. This is pure pineapple juice that I strained off of um, canned 100% pineapple. And then I'm pouring this right into a Gersh top bottle. This is a, one of those flip top old fashioned bottles and I'm gonna just add that right to the bottom of the mixture. And then right now I am pouring in the kefir water that I had fermentating. So you're gonna leave a little bit in the top of the bottle for room for the carbonation and for bubbles to form. And then I'm gonna do this again with a second bottle. And you can add whatever you want in terms of more or less juice in these bottles. You could also do fresh orange peels or fresh lemon wedges. You could do lavender. You could use herbs from your garden. I have chamomile in my garden that I think would be awesome to make a really great tea flavor. So you can really mix and match and make this your own based on your preferences. And then you leave this right on the counter in these bottles and close them very tightly for about 24, 36 hours max. You don't want the pressure to build up because obviously that will explode. So once you're done with the 24 to 36 hours, pop them in the fridge and the fridge and the cold will stop the fermentation process and then you can leave these to enjoy with friends, with yourself, um, whenever you want because it will stop the fermentation process and then you can just leave them until you're ready to enjoy a great bubbly fizzy probiotic beverage. Once you have your juice, it is going to look like this, or I guess kefir water, and you will leave this out on the counter for about 24 hours. It is very, very important to note that if you leave this out for way too long, so say you leave this out for 48 hours, it has a chance of the carbonation like pressure building up in here and exploding. So be very careful. What you can really do a couple times is actually burp the bottle. So you can actually, and you can see the pressure build up and you know that carbonation has occurred. So it's important after 24 hours you pop it into your fridge. So if you start this in the nighttime, by the next evening you can pop it in the fridge and vice versa. Once you pop it in the fridge, the cold fridge temperature will actually stop the fermentation process. So then it's no longer gonna continue to get bubbly and burst. And then you are left with an incredible fizzy beverage. You can try this with all different types of juices, whether you want to do um, grape juice or pineapple juice. What I have been using is pure pineapple juice and pure peach juice from the canned 100% pineapple that I get from the store. I just strain off the fresh juice. There's no syrup in it, it's just the fresh juice. And I've been using about three quarters, half a cup to three quarters in each of these. It is so good. I love kombucha, but kombucha can be a little tangy. And this is to die for. So if you make this, please let me know what juice combination you make. I also feel like this would be great with a little bit of lemons and like some strawberry, like chunks of strawberry in here and it would make like a really nice strawberry lemonade. So if you try this, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. You do not need a lot of space. You do not need a lot of money. And you also don't need a full homestead to make a lot of things from scratch around your house. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like this video, and we will see you next week on CR World. Cheers.